Hey, Daniel, congrats on a great win uh, this evening. Huge, huge knockout, number two in a row. Uh, I just want to know, what was the game plan like coming into this fight? Oh, man. The game plan was to come out. To be honest with you, we came out. We was waiting on him to throw those kicks, so we worked on checking kicks. And somehow he, you know, the boy got some heavy kicks. I'm not going to lie. You know, at one time I tried to kick check, and he kicked straight through it. You know, I'm used to taking them, but I'm like, it's my first time really trying to check some kicks. So I wasn't, I was so focused on countering him. And then I kind of lost sight of what I should have been doing in the first round. So, you know, so things were slow in the first round and I was kind of pick it back, pick it up. And you're also on a, a nice win streak here. You know, you've a couple in a row doing great, great performances. Uh, is this kind of what you envisioned? I guess we can say your return to Bellator. Uh, is this the path that you envisioned and seems like you put a lot of work in? Is this where you, everything that you expected? Yeah, this is everything I expected. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a, um, a winning streak. Um, what is it, about five, six, five, five? Yeah, that's more than a couple. <laughs> well, a five fight winning streak. So, yes, yeah, just like I planned, I just feel like it, right now, you've seen me in the toughest situations in a fight. So, it's like, I'm not, is it's, right now, the point of my career is, is no such thing as losing. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me just being confident. And if I know that I put in enough work that if I can come out of something like that, you know, like you've seen the chokehold, you've seen the me coming back from these devastating kicks, um, you've seen me from being on the ground. I chose to rest on the ground when my cellar was on me because my leg, he did some damage. I'm being honest and say that, you know. So I was, I wanted to rest on the ground. So I, I knew I was about to get up and come out and sprint. So, you know, so that's, that's you know, that kind of makes sense to you. And for you, what's next on, what's next from here? Or um, getting back to the drawing board and looking forward to what's next for you this year? First, I'm going to heal this damn leg. Then I'm going to get back to training, you know, uh, just spend a little time with my son, uh, my boys. They boxing right now, so um, one of them eight, one of them fourteen. Just want to just try to invest the time into them. Um, right now, they they at the age that they really see what their daddy's doing, and um, you know, I'm just trying to really inspire them as young men um, to just bite down and move forward in life. So for them to see me do this and come back from all this craziness in the fight and um, and have fun, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I won't, I'm just being able to inspire them and just put a little time into them and um, and I'm um, get back to training. Hey, Daniel. Congratulations. Um, <clears throat> Scott said that, you know, Linton Vessel is probably going to get the next title shot, but there is a big fight coming to Chicago. If, you're, if, you're, if your leg heals by then, are you, are you trying to hop on that card? Yeah, my leg will be healed. I heal like a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally heal fast. But um, you can't have none in Chicago without me. You know what I'm saying? So people are already buying tickets. You know, so people already text me like, yo, I'm getting my four seats now. So Chicago waiting. They're waiting on me. And it's in June. So we there. And then finally for me, man, um, there was, there was a lot of chatter, you know, people not giving respect to this main event. People were saying like, why is this the main event? Do you think you shut them up? Yeah, I shut them up. Those people that just said that, those people are really not MMA fans. Those people say, oh, you ask those people in the street, you say, hey, what do you do? Well, I, I, do, I, do, I do UFC. I'm like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, they not fans. An MMA fan is a person that studied the arts, watch fights from all different aspects, from, from Bellator to UFC to one FC. They watch all this. Them real fans. These people that's on there with these keyboard warriors, they don't really know because tonight you was a non-believer, you're a believer now. How could you not like it? Like, how could you not like what I did? Daniel, in the uh, closing moments of the fight where you got the knockout, was that something that was scouted or did you just see an opening and react to it? Um. Pretty much, there's a lot of reaction. So I'm always going to throw the jab, uppercut, hook. That's just like my go-to. So when I when I saw him, that I, when I saw Marcelo Gomes moving, when I threw little punches, little jabs and stuff like that, I'm like, he don't want to get hit. Like, he don't want to get hit. And I just, him just being young in the sport, and I understand that, like, you're going to get hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get kicked, you're going to get hit. So you can't expect to do damage and not receive damage. But I noticed that these guys got glass chins. You know what I'm saying? So... I knew I was going to knock him out with the uppercut, though. I knew I was going to land the uppercut today. I told Coach in the back room, I say, push come to shove, and I don't follow the game plan. I'm going to do what I do, and that might be the uppercut or a straight. Right here. So after the first two rounds, did you believe that you were up in the fight, or was there a sense of urgency going into the third? Um, You know, he had me on the ground, so my back was on the ground. So I don't, I don't care about what I was in the round or how many – 
what, what round I'm winning. I just need to win one with a knockout. Like, I, if I'm losing three rounds, I got to make sure the fourth round is going to be a winning round for me. And that's a knockout, a finishing round. So it don't matter how many rounds somebody win. I'm a, I don't care if I won the first or second round. I, I knocked them out. So what was the talk in your corner going into that third? Did they tell you go knock them out? Oh, yeah. I told I went to the corner coach. They sit down. I told coach, I said, hey, I got to go southpaw. And he was like, no, that leg is not done yet. Bite down and move forward. And I went down. He said, you got a lot in you. And I said, I can go southpaw and knock him out. He said, I know that, but that leg is not done. Let's keep it orthodox and knock him out. And I went and knocked him out. He just said, knock him out. He said, go and knock him out. How's it going, Daniel? MMA Locker Room, part of Pub Sports Radio. Shots down in the building. Yes, sir. CHI. Yes, sir, man. So it seems like, you know, you hurt your little leg right there, but you're walking out with some Jordans on, man. So, you know, you got any sneakers in mind that you plan on buying after this one? Man, I'm trying to get those Travis Scott. Mm, you know, those Travis, way. yeah, I'm trying to get them Travis Scott's both pair. And, um, uh, man, I'm a sneaker junkie too, man. My friends are sneaker heads, but like, I just became a sneaker junkie years ago. I like jewelry, watches, and nice pieces of neck piece. Out of my Pukats and Rolex watch, uh, some nice, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I like stuff like that, a Cuban. Uh, but I love shoes. Them Travis Scott's. If anybody got them Travis Scott, send them to me. 13. There you go. You heard it right there. Yes, Another sir. thing. Can you talk to me about your walkout music? Because do me for a little loop. You know, when you walked out, I heard some type of music. But when Gomes walked out, I heard Tupac. What was you walking out to? I walked out to Chicago Bulls theme song. You feel me? Jordan has six rings. I'm trying to get to seven one. That's the Bellator belt. That song gonna play every time I walk out from now on. Hey Daniel K ones for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on the win, man. Um in our interview a couple of weeks ago, almost a month ago, you talked about giving out ass whoopings. Yeah. And you know, you giving them you give them out with no problem. Was tonight an example of you giving out an ass whooping? Yeah, tonight was an ass whooping. Now, I was thinking about you, Ken. Um when I was watching the uh, promo that they did, me and Marcella, he say, I, I respect him, he's a good fighter, but you know, I'm a better fighter. I'm looking like, like, what do these people be thinking? I'm like, you know, it's, I'm not the guy that sit up there and talk smack, but it's like, when I get the weigh ins and I look at you in your face and I size you up, it's like, it's like all the talking is done now. Like I'm in front of you, I'm big. I came in the ring 20 pounds heavier than you today. I'm gonna always do that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I'm a nice guy. I respect everybody. But when I stop smiling, that's when everything stops. And, um, and I hand out ass with me tonight. At any given time during the fight tonight, uh, did you find yourself fighting with some type of frustration? No, no, I didn't, I didn't find myself fighting with any frustration. You know what I'm saying? I kept it cool. You know what I'm saying? Back then, early in my career, like when I was around Marcella Gomes' um, age, um, I probably would have lost my composure, but I just, I got to get it because, you know, but now it's just about me being aware in that cage and being a veteran and understanding where I'm at. I know that the fight either going to end with a knockout or a tap out. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to be, it's going to be some damage. Like this, you could play football, basketball. You can't play this. You got to do this. This is different. I got them Starbucks cookies for you too, man. I, man, you see me looking around like a mice in the cookie job, right? I, was like, <laughs> I want them. Yeah, that's my favorite cookie to eat, man. I, I got to get me a cookie. I got to get me a cookie. Congratulations on the win, man. Appreciate it. What's up, Daniel? How you doing? Congratulations. You got mad at me the first time I did this, but I'm going to try one more time. Maybe you'll like it more this time. Uh, basically, nine years ago today, you won your first fight with Bellator, March 2014. You were the first fight of the night. Now, tonight, main event. You see your name on the billboards, the shirts, the promos, all this. Yeah, commercials. Mm -hmm. All I, that. I think, we go, I think the company going to do their thing now. Sell a lot of more shirts. Yep. Yeah, they're going to push gonna Sell you. a lot of more shorts. They're going to sell a lot of more promos. I look cute on camera. I'm like a good, cute chocolate guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody want like the chocolate guy with the dreads. Nice to everybody. Like the chocolate heavyweight. And you're going to get that. I might wear that on my shirt. Chocolate heavyweight, Bella Toy MMA. Does the camera add five pounds or not for you? Huh? Does the camera add five pounds or no? Oh, shit. I'm 280 when I get in the ring, 275. <laughs> Legit. All right. What I was going to ask was, I know you're still hungry. I know you want more. You want the strap. You want the Bellator world title. But do you think in a few days, maybe a week, it's all going to set in? Do you think you'll sit back and say, like, wow, give yourself a pat on the back. I'm really doing everything I set out to all those years ago? Yeah, I'm sitting back, man. No, some, listen, man, when I be sitting up in, I don't go on rants. I just, you know, I be talking sometimes. And I know the business. You know, you got to sell. You got to get, you know, 
Like when I call Ryan Bader out, it's no ill will and everything, but I think it'll be a good fight. And um, I do want that fight. I won't want to wait on it. But, uh, you know, whoever's there, they gave Lynn Vassell a shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to respect that. But the thing is, if they decide to say, hey, this might work better, I'm down for it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, those some awesome guys, man. I got a chance to see Ryan Bader today. And it's like I say, there's no ill will. Like we're going to we're gonna have fun when we get in there. And it's going to be respectful and it's going to be somebody going to, you know, leave the cage with their hand raised, you know what I'm saying? And and I really dream this. I really dream this, you know what I'm saying? I don't dream when I sleep. I dream when I'm walking around. I dream every day when I'm just walking around. I vision everything. You're not dreaming now, though. You're doing it. I know it's a reality. Yeah, you made it a reality. You know what I'm saying? But it's always good to make new ones. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, man. So tonight I created a new one. Daniel James. Mike Finch. <laughs> Another knockout, another uppercut. You're the underdog again. You go out there and you finish the fight. What did you see that made you let your hands go like that? I felt that leg starting to hurt. And I say, if I don't go out there right now, he's going to kick it one more time and these people are going to see me fall. <laughs> I say, I will refuse to let these people see me fall. Like, I refuse that. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather die than give up. You know what I'm saying? And I know it sounds crazy, but I'd rather die and give up. You know what I'm saying? I cannot give up like that. Like when I know it's people out here watching and it's people out there in this crowd, like I don't know how every individual feel in here, but like I inspire so many people. There's so many people waiting on me back home. There's so many people that message me on Instagram and Facebook. I don't have anybody operating my social media. It's me. I respond to people. And when I respond to these people, I have people telling me that I help them through things in life. You know, uh, you know, I, like telling me, like, yo, like, man, listen, I had a kid message me last week, and I told him that I will keep this confidential. I just feel like it needs to be said because I see it all the time. The kid was 17 years old. 17 years old. He just turned 17 last month. And um, the kid say he didn't know what to do with himself. He didn't feel worthy and this and that. So I'm like, yo, come on, man. What are you talking about? And the kid wanted to kill himself. So when you say stuff like that, I don't care if he's trying to get some me to send him something or whatever, but I don't know. I can't take that for granted. But I'm, I just say, hey, I'll send you a picture with my autograph or try to get some shirts from Bellator and send them to you. So my shirts that I got in my bag from Bellator, I'm going to send those shirts to that kid, whether he playing or not. I feel like it's time I can save a life. I don't want to turn on the news and say some kid, could, you know what I'm saying? It'll be on my conscience. I can't do that. You fight for more than just you out there. It's a cause. After the fight, Ryan Bader stood up. You and the champ had a moment. Recount that moment for me. What did you think about the response from Ryan? I thought you were pretty respectful, Daniel. Yeah, I was respectful. And I, I admit, you know what? I respect Ryan Bader. I do. You know, at the end of the day, two warriors has to do things. It's like Spartacus. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a game. You come in and you perform. And, and Ryan Bader stood up. And I appreciate Ryan Bader standing up for me. Because him to stand up and applaud me and him to accept what I said, he was like, yo, this is this big, this big MF right here. Yeah, I like this big man. Yeah, I like him to roll around with the teddy bear. We just two big teddy bears, man, and we just want to cuddle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just think that, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, Dave and Goliath, but Goliath wins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I know you want that fight, but my last question for you, if you can't get it in June because of this Linton Vassell matchup, who would you like to see? I mean, I'd like to see some, I don't know, you know, whoever Bellator has. It had to be somebody in front of me, not nobody in back of me. If it don't make no sense to go backwards, you know, give me everybody in front of me. Like, you don't have anybody. Like, who you gonna give me, you know, give me Mario or something. He's a 6'8 guy. I like fighting tall guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Give me, you know... I mean, guys, like, you know, just give me, give me, let's put on a show. Whoever belt to a guy for me, give me, let's do a show. You know what I'm saying? If they don't have nobody for me, I'll still be in attendance. It don't matter. But I, you know, it's, I'm a part of the company. I'm a company guy. I love the company. I always wanted to fight for Bellator and I'm just happy to be here today and I'm willing to do whatever I can to keep my winning streak. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it.